Okay, YouTube, we're back after having to extract uh, two dogs from the UPS truck. Quite common occurrence here on my farm. So I wanted to share with you this enormous space that is going to get converted to a really big freaking vegetable garden. <laughs> this is a spot that originally we cut in with an excavator. You can see that cut bank right there um, that we're going to build a some type of retaining wall right there. Not that we need it, but it'll make it look a lot prettier. Um, this space was normally supposed to be a riding arena for my horse and we did ride uh, horses in here at one time. But we've decided to kind of change direction and do something different. So I like to do everything in groups of 100. So I'm, I got very excited when we were kids and you had that, you know, 100 day, the 100th day of school where you had to count to 100 and everything was in hundreds. I just, I love hundreds. So I'm thinking that I'm going to put in 100 potatoes, 100 onions, 100 heirloom tomatoes. Everything's in 100. That is my dog, George, right there. And um, he is currently trying to pull a dead farm animal out of the compost that I moved. George! Which is absolutely disgusting and foul. So I live in the Pacific Northwest. This is um, Oregon, St. Helens, Oregon. And um, sometimes of the year when farm animals die, it's not conducive to digging a hole in the ground because the soil is too wet. We have heavy clay soil. That's George. Um, He's a mutt of very complex ancestry. So uh, when this particular farm animal died, I could not dig a hole with my big orange tractor, which frankly, you're not supposed to dig a hole with a tractor anyways, but the bucket can be used off label, as they say in the vet world, um, to do so. But I instead buried my poor dead farm animal in my compost, which is over here behind my barn. And that's where I clean out Horse stalls, goat stalls, uh, kidding pens, lambing pens, any of the spent hay and manure, all of their urine, everything goes into that pile to break down. Well, when I moved this compost here, I thought that it had all broken down and then I found some bones and some partially decomposed animal parts. So this did not start out to be a blog about dead animals, I gotta be honest with you. But, um, it's, I don't think it'll be an issue. I may go in there and pull some of that out at some point. Um, obviously don't want to grow food on a rotting corpse, but it does make for awesome fertilizer. So I have above ground composted many, many, many farm animals that have died for various reasons. Um, or if you ever have a mobile butcher come out and they are, uh, super busy or you're the last one on their schedule, they may ask if you can keep the offal. Offal is the nasty innards that come out of animals that you eat. Um, and so a lot of times that will get thrown in the compost, which is actually a great way to heat up your compost heap, especially if you have the ability to turn it all the time, which you need to do to keep it active so that you don't incur the stench of death. Um, or rancid manure, or if you have too much hay piled up, a lot of times that will become anaerobic, which just means there's a lack of oxygen in there. And uh, it, it will break down, but it will take much, 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 much longer. And it will create a slimy, nasty, disgustingness in the meantime. So uh, back to the hundreds. So I have seed potatoes that are going in here. Um, I have onion sets that are going in here, red onions and walla wallas. Um, and I forget the variety of the potato. I generally grow the smaller kind of new potatoes or fingerlings um, just because those are the varieties that I like to cook with. There's no reason why you can't grow any type of potato in this uh, type of situation. We're mainly adhering to um, permaculture methods by Charles Dowding is the guy that I've 
kind of follow on YouTube. He's a big fan of no-till and over the last few years I've looked into and been practicing the no-till method and I'm a huge believer. I've been gardening for 30 years. I'm not saying how old I am. Um, and now that we're all on lockdown, no one's getting their roots done or Botox, so we all look really old. Um, but I do believe that the no-till method works. Um, and I believe that is also better in the long term for your soil. So here you can see, um, this is some spent hay that's not completely broken down. I'm not super worried about that because I have this nice layer of uh, compost on top. And this is a really hard to tell from the video, but this is a pretty big, uh, many inches deep layer of compost on here that's already ready to go. So by the time roots and things get down into this, this will be a lot more broken down than it is currently. And even though I move this all with the tractor, which is awesome, I love my big orange tractor, there is still work to be done with the rake. Um, so the tractor does save a lot of back breaking labor, but also creates its own extra type of labor. So I'll have to come in and smooth all this out with the rake before I get planting. Um, and this is just my first row. This is approximately 100 feet long and four feet wide. Um, so that's a lot of freaking potatoes. So I will keep you guys all um, apprised of the activities going on here. Those are my sheep in the distance. I came out here because I thought it would be a quiet moment to make a little video, which I've never done before. And the UPS man showed up, the dogs got in the truck, all the farm animals want to be fed and the pigs went crazy. So uh, it kind of backfired. But anyway, um, that is it for now. And I'm gonna take this rake and I'm gonna rake the top of this smooth and then I'm gonna go inside and have a cocktail. Talk to you later, bye.